You're probably wondering how it came to be this way. Here, let me explain. Hey, heads up. The watercraft that we're using all have autoboat units on them. That is that super slick streamlined trolling motor right there. That is nothing more than the most basic trolling motor that we made smart with this adapter system. The trolling motor industry and really the fishing industry have needed something like this for so long because there was just a big disparity, a giant gap between the two sides. The cheapest trolling motors are the most basic and stripped down and the, all the smart trolling motors, let's be honest, most of them are beyond the price range of what's actually even feasible for most. And for a lot less money, this system has more features than even the most stripped down smart trolling motors. It has the largest density of value out of anything comparable to it. And to be honest, if I had to put some big bulky base for one of the most stripped down smart trolling motors on this watercraft, I wouldn't be able to stand right there on the bow and enjoy fishing the way I'm doing right now. This thing changes the whole deal because it's made for small portable watercraft like this inflatable. So check this unit out and stop having to worry about constantly adjusting your trolling motor and just enjoy your time on the water. odd visions in my head about how to pull off the ultimate camping trips by myself without having to drag other third-party people in to haul different gear. None of this whole one person hauls the RV, the other person hauls the boat, then like we all have to share it. There's an old saying that says he who can get the most done by himself wins. Actually let's be honest I don't even know if that's a saying but still that's the one I follow. And it suited me fairly well during this whole journey but even I get tired. I'm getting older, I truly desire less of a hassle and more time enjoying things. I think that's what the majority of my audience wants. And most people are not gonna make a double folding trailer just to accommodate their light skiff. What I didn't tell you is that I snuck on a second boat. You just couldn't see it because it hasn't been unfolded yet. Fun fact. If you've ever watched this channel from the very beginning, you'll know that the first boat that actually truly made any headway was an inflatable. That was my very first tiny boat. And that was back when I was younger, broke, up and coming, and I did what everybody else did to get on the grind of fishing, which was haul it around in a compact car. I make fun of all the puppets for this industry, but I myself, when I was younger, was the same thing, an industry puppet following what I thought was cool because other people thought it was cool. So, I mean, striving to get boats, striving to get bigger things, kind of more of a social flex. All that stuff is stupid. Fact is, I really like that inflatable, and I haven't had one for over a decade. Some of my best fishing experiences came out of a Sea Eagle Foldcat 375 FC in a float tube. But affordable inflatables back then were not what they are today. This one is the same type of quality as some of the major ones. This one has a reinforced floor hard rubber that you can drag right on shore without worrying about popping the PVC lining. And the rest of the exterior is a very high grade industry standard PVC lining in three separate chambers with air pressure bleed offs. It's got several external D rings mounted on the outside of the boat. And that is meant so you can put accessories like back and front decks, extend the decks. It already comes with a front deck like this one. And it comes with other like very popular skiff style accessories. This all comes with it. These are not add ons. It comes with a slat style bench seat in the back that you can slide along those little grooves. And that's just optional for you if you want that seat, but a lot of people are just gonna stand up and hold onto that grab bar and tilt from the back as this thing can take up to a 10 horsepower motor. It's got three rail blazer ports mounted strategically right in the front, middle, and back. So you have a pretty good spread of accessories. I've become a huge fan of Railblazer. I have tons of their stuff. They even sent me a bunch of stuff. A lot of the stuff I rigged on the light skiff you just saw in the beginning of this video. That live skull pole you see right there to the left, that is made specifically for kayaks and small watercraft like this. It works perfect. So I'm able to rig all these major things without taking up all the space in the front. See that space up there? It's pretty limited. The graphs take up most of it, so thank heaven. But the truth about them is they've got mounts for everything vertical walls, horizontal walls, any boat with a T-Track system, mounts that latch onto pontoon railings, poles for action cameras, poles for nav lights, short, long, extended, they fold, they twist, they bend any direction you need, cup holders, fish fighter mounts, vertical tackle storage, whatever engineer that they have hired to make their products has thought of everything. So we'll even be mounting more on this front plate for a trolling motor stabilizer and for the front nav light. To accommodate a transit mount trolling motor up here in the front, I just made a quick mount. We'll likely fabricate and sell these as an add-on for this front mount if you need it. 
We can possibly even talk to their tech so they can just make them themselves as an add-on. Everything straps in through the D-rings on both the hull and the floor. It's all four separate parts. And last but not least, what skiff style layout would be complete without a cooler right there. So a 40 or 50 quart cooler is going to be perfect there to sit down and obviously stow and hold stuff or even be a live wall. And just so you know, that front generally comes with turf on it, but I asked them to not turf it. So I could just do it myself here. I wore down on HydroTurf to finally send me some non-routed teak and they finally did it. Super happy about this because their non-routed stuff is, in my opinion, superior to Orthodox. They just don't like to do it. So it'll take some convincing through us and through you guys to get them to do it. I also cut a circle out there right in the front because I'm gonna put another rail blazer port there. This one, it just goes on with adhesive to any flat surface. And that is where I'm gonna put the nav light. Rail blazer has a quick lock system. So most of the ones before it had a little hex system like that, but not with a quick lock. So it's much faster and much safer overall. And here is that trolling motor stabilizer. They have this and it can fit on any size trolling motor. It's going to be perfect for this one because this one's not really meant to be stowed like a bow. But even bow mount trolling motors similar to the setup like this have problems with the shaft bouncing up and down and the head hitting off the deck. So that'll just stop all that immediately. And we've got the autoboat system that has convert this transom to a bow mount. And if you're wondering how to vent water, should water get into the system? Well, this has a very unique drain system. No worrying about a drain plug or losing that thing. Just pull this lever up or down to release the water and seal it off from the back. And just in case you're wondering, this is a heat welded unit, not adhesive. So it can just stay blown up and it'll be just fine. Hey guys, if you made it this far in the video, it means you'd like something about it. So go ahead and hit that like button to help this video trend and find others like you. Also check us out on all other major social media platforms. We are there. So without further ado, let's get this thing on the water. In the White Mountains, there is a fairly big connection and chain of lakes. You just gotta seek them out and find them. On this particular one, we took the light skiff, put it in there, dropped it off the truck, and did pretty good out there. Son and I had a blast. So we're gonna try and replicate the same experience with the air skiff. So that never happened with the light skip because the nose was pointed out farther than the trolling motor, but this time the trolling motor extended it and grabbed. That thing always comes off my truck bed anyways, the thing sucks. But what makes up for that is how stable this craft is. It's extremely stable from front to back. It is also significantly lighter than the light skiff, or really even any watercraft close to its size. I go ahead and put on the trusty e-propulsion. It's not any more powerful than its gas outboard equivalent, but it is extremely reliable and maintenance free. No leaking oil or gas, cold start or impeller problems, changes in performance with altitude. None of that exists. It just is ready right out of the bag every time. Surprisingly, we got quite a bit of speed. I know you can't really tell from the camera, but it's extremely windy up here and we're going against the wind with two people in the craft, fully loaded up and it's almost doing about six mile an hour. One thing about this skiff that was an initial worry to me but it no longer is, is how skinny it is. And just any other watercraft this skinny that is relying on just initial displacement for stability doesn't do well. However, with inflatables, the air-filled chambers are 100 times more effective in creating initial stability with buoyancy because you have initial displacement plus air, which does not like to sink underwater at all. And because of that, this air skiff though not being any wider than a kayak or a small john boat is way more stable than both. But because it's so light, it does get owned by the wind very badly. So not having an autopilot trolling motor like this one would be just miserable, but also sticking something like an Altrex or even a power drive or Tarova or an XI3 on this would just be bulky and also miserable. So we really have the best of both worlds with this autoboat conversion. It's allowing us to just be on fish and do our thing. There's definitely some issues involving gear storage and how much gear you can actually put in the inflatable because of the tubes being so big that the inside is cramped in. But that kind of goes away with all the benefits of the boat being so stable. The one thing I didn't do before I got on this boat was put the gain settings on the auto boat so it can do anything from a kayak all the way to a large boat. And I think it's set on large boat and this is what happens when you don't do your gain settings. Woo! 
if it thinks it's a large boat, it's going to put max thrust to push that over. But if it pushes max thrust on a small boat, then it always over corrects. So it'll try to go back and forth and recorrect, but it'll just keep pushing itself back and forth. This is pretty common on all the new super trolling motors where they all have gain setting features for any size boat it goes on. In Illinois, I experienced the exact same thing with a Garmin Force on a 16 foot modified John boat, though I wasn't standing right on the bow of that boat like I was on this one. I just got a little too comfortable and carried away with how stable the boat was and well, I should have just spent some more time tuning and modifying things, but I'll let you know that after I got inside this boat, I put it on the right gain setting. In another up note, that Onyx inflatable life vest, hey, it works. Test it out, confirmed. There you go. Once I got the gain settings, I even went in there and just manually edited a track to follow. And we set the boat on that because it was just windy and we wanted to focus on what little time we had left on the lake fishing. And we just let the autopilot feature and auto boat just do everything by itself. And right now that's what we're doing. We're following a route. Every time that we saw fish come to the top or that we started getting hits, we would anchor. A lot of people enjoy the route feature because it gives you kind of the feel of a really expensive trolling motor and fish finder combo with just a free phone app in your phone. But personally, I like the nav heading. It does more or less the same thing, points you in a straight line, keeps your boat on course, and you just make minor adjustments. All the buttons on the boat are easy to memorize and therefore just quickly press. I have not had that same experience on any of the other trolling motors I've tried that are remote capable. It's easier to steer the trolling motor with your foot, but I don't have that experience here because the remote is so simple. I don't miss the foot pedal at all. In fact, the auto boat system is going to evolve so very quickly that we'll be coming out with even crazier stuff than this. You just gotta stay tuned for that. But overall, I would give this Air Skiff an A+. It renewed my confidence in inflatables and is now gonna be my primary boat when I go to these lakes. If you saw this Air Skiff and you like what you see, we have them available for purchase right here on tbnation.net. Check the links in the description and comments below also. All right, breakdown. What do we do here? How easy is it? It's just as easy to break this thing down as it was to put it together. The boat has enough external D-rings on the outside of the hull that you can attach pretty much any mod. This is just a stock bow plate that comes with it, but if you're a handy yourself, you can make your own bow plate and your own full deck. You could probably put a four foot deck on this boat. You might not be able to keep this piece in there with the grab bar, but you can essentially turn this thing into a bass boat. Uh, that was a big thing when we were working with this manufacturer that this inflatable was somehow modifiable because inflatables are generally not modifiable at all, but this one is. This boat comes with a stock air pump that will inflate and deflate, but we bought that little electric pump we got there because it is so much easier. It makes the process way faster and way less of a hassle. You want it to be deflated as much as possible. That way you can get the tightest roll that you can because that bag that we threw off the boat at the very beginning of the unboxing is the bag this boat fits in. And however good you roll it is however good it fits in there. We didn't do the best job. Definitely could have got it tighter in there, but we didn't care because we had a toy hauler and we just threw it right in there. Actually, I think we put it in the truck bed because it didn't really take up that much space. I mean, I paired that boat right alongside in the same weekend with this light skiff, used them both on two different lakes. And I like the air skiff so much that I'm willing to forego my tackle junkie ways, which is why I really liked the light skiff so much its ability to store mass amounts of gear in there but i don't know stability and safety lightness and portability ease of comfort like stowing and deploying the boat getting it ready for travel breaking it down all those things are very cumbersome with a solid boat hole like this inside a toy hauler it's kind of a lot plus most people don't have a toy hauler a lot of people have rvs or just tent camp and in that point Something like this is way more functional if you're trying to pack it along with all the rest of your camping gear. You can just bust it open, build it up, and have a full rig just like this at your fingertips. I do like the light skiff a lot. It has been instrumental in my ability to figure out these small lakes with chocolatey waters you can't see like six inches down. If I was the only person on the watercraft, then this might be just the perfect boat, but it does accommodate two people. It just doesn't do it well. The stabilization within the 360 camera just dumbs down a lot of it but i tell you we were getting blown all over the place and it was quite turbulent and both my son and i were like this stinks but it was also quite bad on this lake and if you can just tell by the camera's movement and us not having to overcompensate for the shakiness you can tell which one was definitely more pleasant to actually be on versus the other the biggest line of comments we get from people are how is it going to handle a plus sized individual um the light skiff is not going to handle you very well but this air skiff probably will handle you much better if you really truly need a small watercraft that's going to be stable for you. My son and I couldn't even really move this thing. We both put a, probably stand right on that pontoon and it wouldn't have sank at all. 
my bigger thing about the light skiff that won me over about it was just it was so much like the boats I tried to build naturally or just a max amount of gear and stowage can be put inside of it, but it's still portable and light and it feels like a small watercraft. And though it's too large and heavy to be a car topper, it's not any less portable than a larger kayak. So unless you needed motorless propulsion for some reason, this thing made large elite kayaks obsolete. There's literally no benefit that a large mega kayak has over a light skiff. It is also not prone to popping like an inflatable. You're also able to rig it to the max like a regular boat because it actually is a boat. But I don't know if these things after using the air skiff are just enough to win me over anymore. I've had this long-term mentality where I don't believe it is efficient or smart to sacrifice the utilitarian function of your watercraft in pursuit of comfort. I think that's nourishing weakness in spite of progress. But I think that benefits more of a young man's mentality because the older I get, the more I start to empathize with people who are seeking out comfort. I don't ever foresee myself giving up a tackle junkie style of fishing, so the watercraft will have to have some accommodation there, but I can get around that. Ease of portability and maneuverability have become extremely important to me on these camping trips where I'm stacking all kinds of stuff, trying to accommodate everybody, and it just, by the time I get to fishing, I'm already stressed out from all the other nonsense. And it's just kind of nice to have a, a craft that is a little bit less worry-free, where I don't have to be on edge when I'm sitting on it. The tube extension sticking that far past the motor mount on each side give it a beaver pod-like feel, making the draft of this watercraft extremely shallow. It is the shallowest draft ever, and because of that, I didn't have to back it in near as far with my truck. I could do this with a light skiff, but I had to back the truck farther in, and then water got on the differential, and I had to change the differential fluid a few times, and that was just expensive and taxing. So this one barely has to be in there within a few inches of water, and it'll draft just fine. And though it was unfortunate during the method of testing for how it happened, getting back on the boat was actually fairly easy. The boat was so stable, it did not tip to one side, even when I myself, which am over 200 pounds, was pulling to get back on. By the way, for anyone wondering, I took that Onyx life vest off because I could not really get back on the boat with it on, but I didn't take it on until I was certain the boat had stopped and that I would be able to recover. And then there's just a diversity of things you can do when you're on a camping trip or on any sort of outdoor trip. You try to diversify. Maybe you want to do a bike ride or do something else. Pack a bunch of tents, pack a bunch of like grilling gear. I don't know, whatever, backpacking gear. Like you need room for other things and to pack that light skiff inside my toy hauler all the time. That just takes up all the room and less room that we can feasibly work around things. Plus, I just got tired of dropping it in and out of my truck bed. It's not the worst thing to do, but it gets old. And so I did make this fold-out trailer. I'm actually pretty happy about it. It did make using the light skiff a whole lot easier. It just was something I had thought about for a while and finally figured out how to execute it. I'm actually going to do a video about it. It's probably going to come up next here in the Curie. But this light skiff was so light that two people picking this up or even one person maneuvering it on a dolly was way more doable than... It didn't even need any other accommodation. It's just light. I mean, it builds itself up with air, which weighs nothing. So it's just a win. Less things needed to accommodate it. So my choice after reviewing the pros and cons of both is that I'm ultimately going to switch to this one, at least for the meanwhile, and give it its fair run. It's not that its strengths and benefits outweigh that of the light skiff. It's just that the certain ones that it has are just something I'm more interested in. Much more portable, stowable, and deployable. It just all those things matter to me a little bit more in today's time than it did yesterday. That and this channel has neglected inflatables for almost the entire life of its duration. And it's time for us to get in there and dive deep into them and give them their fair share of reviews. So stay tuned for more on the light skiff. If you want to check out the light skiff, the link is in the description and also pinned in the comment section. You could always just search air skiff on tbnation.net. We'll see you out there, guys, in the next video. Thank you for taking the time. Always a pleasure. Peace.